Okay, now for something completely different, um, I'd like to show you my starter's order save. Um, maybe we'll play a week in time on this game as well. Um, I have poured a ridiculous amount of time into this game, which if you've got the sort of obsessive personality that I do, it is pretty addictive. Um, and by the way, if Sue Magnier is watching, as I'm sure she is, um, and fancies borrowing some of my names for horses, then do feel free. I think I've accepted at this point in my life that I'm not going to reach JP McManus levels of wealth and probably won't get the opportunity to breed hundreds of horses myself. So if she fancies not uh, you know, not naming horses somehow and was and listen and all that crap and and wants to borrow from my taste in dreadful music and books and TV, then uh, I give you my full blessing. Um, so I've got, but what have I got? I've got 202 horses in my stable at the moment. Um, ages between two and five. I tend to retire at age six, apart from in a few cases. Um, plenty of established group one winners. Um, classic generation going for the Derby, Guineas, etc. And a whole lot of unraced two-year-olds as well. I've just gone through and done my first round of entries um, for everything that that has a suitable race for it at the moment. Um, what else do we have? Um, should we look at the history? All time highest earners. You see, I've got eight of the top 10 now. I think I must have played about 10 seasons on this game. It, this really is, <laughs> this is one of the saddest videos I'm probably ever gonna publish. But it's a good game if, if you have a very specific interest. Um, so, Hey Solid Citizen is actually still in training um, and probably has a chance to become the uh, highest earner on the game this year. Um, Racing Admin Slag as well um, <laughs> is also still going, so hopefully she'll keep climbing the list. Uh, yeah, maybe Mad Girl's Love Song will go a bit higher too. Um, if we sort by Group 1 winners, uh, What is Chatteris sets the standard with 24. She just retired at the end of the last season, so looking forward to breeding from her. Um, it's interesting that a lot of these horses, especially the Colts, um, aren't. it doesn't necessarily translate into being a good stallion just as in life, if you're a good racehorse. Um, I think like Mark Anthony, Judge Holden, um, a few of these other ones, Return of the Mac, that they haven't been uh, successful really, or or they, they pass on the flaws that they could compensate for. The flaws seem to pass on to all their progeny, just as much as the ability. So. There you go. Um, we've got a pretty well stocked breeding barn as well. I've just, I've still 178 breeding mares. This really is a Coolmore style operation in scale already. <laughs> um, I've actually had a clear out recently as well. Maybe got rid of sort of 25 mares that had enough chances. Um, so it really is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, I expect, and it's. It's probably already on the verge of being unmanageable, so I can't really get too many more. Um, best stallion in the game uh, isn't one that I own. Um, is Bound for Glory, who's sired 200 Group 1 winners. And his influence is a bit like Galileo in real life. is is so huge that a vast amount of my breeding mares and stallions have Bound for Glory all over the pedigree, so I've been looking for outcrosses and uh, trying to do something about that. So, sort of getting to a sort of interesting stage in the 
um, the breeding program, I suppose. Um, I ride most of my horses um, in jockey mode as well as doing the entries. I don't do the training. I, I draw the line there at individually training each horse. I, I let the game auto train them. I, I think that would be too much. Um, it already takes long enough to, to go through and make the entries and map out your mating plans and etc etc and go to the auctions and, and whatnot so there you are um i'd like to think i've got strength in most of the divisions in my um current uh horses um this one right at the top uh, for physical is um the best stayer in the game i'd say he's yeah, he's won the cadran ascot gold cup um sort of effective two miles two mile four run well in a couple of melbourne cups um i might stretch him out for another couple of seasons although it is quite tempting to breed from him as well um racing admin slag is just the dominant mile two horse at the moment hey solid citizen won the arc last year and a, a whole load of other mile four horse uh, races she's very good um Mad Girl's Love Song, good mile, mile one horse. Um, what a hat full of group ones. So you sort of like the gold cove of my game, I suppose. I don't have a good sprinter. Um, this Tintin Abulation won a couple, I think in his three-year-old season. Just completely went off the rails last year. It's like finishing last and um, it's a bit regressive. So I could do with some more sprinters coming through. I've got a couple of three-year-olds that might sort of fill the void there. Um, I like to think I've got plenty who will be competing for the classics this year. Um, I've got a few sort of group two, group one winning uh, two year olds who will be going for the guineas, etc. Uh, Lawless Flame, I've got five on it, it's very good. And plenty of sort of slow burning types who, who should be going for the Oaks and the Derby. Um, and yeah, a whole lot of two year olds as well. Uh, it's hard to tell how good each batch is, but um, sometimes you think, oh, no, there's no stars in here, and you end up with some of the, like all-time greats. So that you know they do develop and uh, and change. Um, I've entered some in like the very early season, South African and Dubai maidens and uh, five, six furlong group races. Um, I think I'll let the AI read uh, ride them just to sort of get a feel for what they are and I tend to let the AI do the riding on debut just so you get the jockeys comments of how the horse likes to be ridden and they often run green first time as well and I feel like it's negative if I'm sort of like slashing away with the whip on a green horse I, I think it might leave a mark so um, I try to avoid that um, yeah let's crack on so it's the 10th of January 2031 at the moment there's a bit of a glitch with this game. I'm not sure if there's a way that you can do it. They've got all these valuable races the very first day of the season in South Africa, but you sort of land on this day and you can't enter for them. So you can only watch the, the AI horses uh, mop those up. But let's play through to the 17th of January. I think I've got a few runners. I've definitely got one in that Group 2 race in Dubai. Um, and uh, yeah, I haven't actually played this game in a while. I haven't done the riding part in a long time either. So um, have we got any sales coming up? Oh, we've got one sale as well. So there might be something there to, to pick up. I haven't done, played in a while, so I might be a little bit rusty, but we'll see how we go. Avin Vasi Levich has already proven over this distance in the 305 and the ground will be no problem. Good chance at Kempton. I need to disable that. Uh, Speech alerts. Let's turn Speech it off. Speech alerts turned off. There we go. That's better. That's a bit annoying, isn't it? Hopefully, I can just talk over the commentary as well. So, we got one runner today. Let's go for it. Where is it? 
We've got Solitude Standing, Mole 2 Handicap, a three year old against mostly very you know, old regressive horses, apart from this Kazayan, uh, who's maybe a bit of a suspect stayer looking at the pedigree and the way it's finished, although it has run in some good races last year. Um, my horse bred to stay pretty well. One at this distance end of last year likes to be held up. Finishes strongly. It's by Vuko Jabina, who um, was like a mile four, mile six horse. So, and its stamina bar is only about halfway. So yeah, maybe this isn't a massive stayer itself, but it's proven at the trip and sort of young relatively unexposed versus the rest i'd be hopeful that we're winning this are we fit enough oh we're a little bit short of work though so a little bit short on fitness oh yeah quite a lot short actually so probably do well to win it's early in the season it Good takes a few days orders. for the um ai to get them up to full fitness it's probably for the best that i'm not entered in those early season races so the commentary is just going to drive me out completely Because A.N. is restrained in the lead. Christie's Beach races a little freely in second. But we want to be held up and the horse is settled. See there's no red uh, dot in Christie's the next Christie's Beach is one length the ahead bar, of Kazi so and back to final flyer just clear of Margo. Dez Vief's just clear of Solitude standing. Less than one mile to go. Just want to Racing fill the tank for a bit. Kazi and, and takes positions. up the running from Christie's Beach. And see if we can go Kazi and win. is the leader from Christie's Beach, a gap to final flyer, two lengths clear of citrus mark from Mr. Harmouche back to Margot Dez Fiefs. Solitude standing improves easily on the inside reel from the rear. Well, the tank is full. We have six furlongs to go. The leader is the. Mr. The Harmouche is still we were worried about it, the only four year old. Kazi in his two lengths in front of Christie's Beach a gap, Tolfino fly a gap back to Solitude, standing back to Margot Dez, Fiefs from Mr. Harmouche, and then Citrus Mark in last position. I've made my Less move a little bit early, longs to go. red dot, but now we want to Solitude standing go early and try and test the stamina of this uh, Kazi in is clear leader, from Christie's Beach, just clear of final fly, just clear of Solitude, standing a gap back to Margot Dez, Fiefs from bit. Citrus Mark, just clear of Mr. Harmouche in last position. Going left handed. Well like inside the final three furlongs. Because A in is three lengths in front of final flyer. A gap to Solitude standing. A gap to Christie's Beach. A gap back to Citrus Mark. Well inside the final two furlongs. Because A in is three lengths in front of Solitude We're standing. We're hoping this leader is going to stop. Because A in is ridden in the lead by two. Inside the final furlong. Because A in is ridden in the lead by two. Solitude standing is running on. Because A in has to. Because A in is the winner. Hmm. A little bit frustrating. I guess it, the leader did stay, but also the pot of soft lead. And I'm a little bit of a victim of the way that my horse had to be ridden there. Um, you know, from the back. But on the other hand, you know, that other horse, Citrus Mark, was slowly gaining on us, so it's not like it's not like I was on clearly the best horse in the race or anything. A little bit disappointed not to win that though. Um, but it was short of fitness, so maybe next time it'd be a little bit better. Yeah, a bit of a meh kind of start. Chelms for a front runner's track as well, isn't it? So we just had that one today. Don't want to buy those. Okay. Next, we go to Lingfield just for one. Swap point. Another three year old in a mile handicap. Another hold up horse. Starting from a fairly low base off 81. Up against a load of other three year olds, though, so this could be a fairly hot race. Uh, see you later. 
what are the three year olds like? We got Cheek Pieced Warrior. I'm just looking at the pedigrees as well. None by brilliant stallions that I've seen so far. No, this this won't be one of my stable stars, but I do think we've got a chance. They're under starters orders. Going to be a very similar ride to the previous one here. And they're racing. Skyrock takes a pull in the lead. Spider Pack is pushed into the You're early lead. Far back. See you later races freely in second. Spider Pack is in front from See you later ahead of Skyrocket ahead of Fairly ahead of Daily Theft a gap toss bend and sleep. Channeling the my inner James Spencer here. I can see what Spencer Spider loves Pack doing. Is one length this ahead is some of thrill. Later ahead of Fairly just clear of Skyrocket. Going left handed. Five for long to go. Inside. Spider Pack is two lengths in front of Fairly. Next is See You Later, just clear of Skyrocket, and then Daily Theft, just mm. clear of Spend and Sleep the Gap Toss, What Point a Gap Toll, Earth Clinch in last position. Stamina bar is running out, which longs. will be a problem. Spider Pack travels well. Worth Clinch is last and driven along, and is some seven lengths off the pace. Well inside the, the final again. three fair longs. Spider pack lead from fairly and then see you later a gap to a swap point. Just Two trying to nurse it in on the bridle because the stamina bar is running out. Spider pack is the leader from swap point back to fairly ahead of see you later and then skyrock gets two lengths clear of daily theft. The stamina bar is gone. Inside the final far going away from them. Swap point quickens into Anyone two lengths in lead. I don't think so. Swap point is three lengths in front. Of Swap point looks like winning here. Swap point takes it easily. I wasn't that confident on that one. I actually fancied the other one more in the run. At least they just sort of stopped in front of us. It's quite impressive how it made its ground up though. There we go, first winner on camera. I often feel when I'm walking through a busy train station, like I'm Jamie Spencer trying to sort of weave through among slow moving pedestrians, running up blind alleys, having to take a pull, etc. Oh boy, we've got a lot of runners here. I think a lot of them are two year olds though, so probably only be one that I actually ride. Okay, first we go to Newcastle for one. Uh, three year old handicap, Help Me Rhonda, who is pretty well bred by one of my best stallions out of a group one winner as well. Um, a fair bit of racing last year, six furlong to a mile two and sort of plateaued. Another one who wants to be held up. It's way out of the handicap. Might not stay. What else have we got? That's quite well bred. That might improve for the trip. Anas Sazi. Uh -huh. That's probably the main danger is to skim Anasazi, the one to worry about. Again, this probably isn't one of the stars of the stable. Under orders. There's a bonus if it wins. Do you like and they're racing. The Help me, Ron. To start it slowly. Plenty of Ryan leads under a straight. The game only gives you certain Plenty options Ryan for colors. Plenty of the leader so from uh, midsummer, and then Tolo Sunset ahead of Taste Ten. Kenny Alexander. To start off to morning, and then Apache Glory ahead of Help me, Ron. From Missum and Georges. Midsummer moves through the pack from over two lengths off the lead. They have less than a mile to go. 
going so left handed. Tracking the main danger. I saw it anyway. From over the length of the pace. Plenty of rain is one length in front of Apache Glory ahead of Tolo Sunset ahead of Midsummer Agapto Taste Terrible Agapto now Sozzy. Anasazi is racing mid division about three lengths off the pace. So inside the final the stamina for bar lungs. hasn't filled, which suggests this horse is, is way back about five lengths. Even off if it the wins pace. here, isn't going to win too many more races. Plenty of rain is the leader from Tolo Sunset. Gap to back, Gloria Gap to Nasazi back to Midsummer back to Taste Terrible. A gap back to help me run. A gap We've back to miss him in George's ahead of Star Wolf to Morning here. in last position. Star Wolf to Morning is out wide. Less than four for longs right, to go. We need to find a way through. And it looks to be going well. Apache that Glory is making headway. Ideal. Miss him and Georgie struggles in the rear and is about six lengths off the pace. Well inside the final three fair longs. Pliny Orion is nowhere. ridden in the lead by two. Pliny Orion goes for home. Two fair longs to go. Tallow Sunset is pushed along mid division. Star of the Morning now leads. Star of the Morning quickens up. Into the final for long. Star of the Morning is niggled along into a lead. Star of the Morning is two lengths in front of Anis. The favourite. Star of the Morning takes it. That was a bit crap to be honest. I mean I ran into a little bit of trouble but felt like it was struggling from a long way. The only thing is this potential ability bar is nowhere near a field out yet, so it's the type of horse that will just improve with racing, I suppose. Uh, but then all the secondary bars are quite moderate, so it's probably one to sort of stick with for another year and see if we can get that potential bar filled out a bit more. It's just going to improve the more you run, run it, but... Um, one I wouldn't breed from either because of all these bars. A lot of that finish application one is the key one. You want that to be full ideally. Um, and there's every chance that passes on to the net to its progeny as well. So I've got plenty of horses by Jude the Obscure, who is by Pound for Glory, to like so many of horses in my stable. So yeah, might be one. Only lasts another year or two. Right, Newcastle again, 13F Cali. So it's one of only three three year olds. Might stay further than this. This is quite well bred. Miss Doody's produced some Group 1 winners. Um, again, wants to be held up. Fairly highly tried last season. Yeah, optimistic. Under orders. And they're racing. Frazzled is restrained in the lead. Signor de is pushed into the early lead. Ballerin de Bost is pushed into the early lead. Signor de Gear goes into the lead once more. The pace so appears to be strong and the field well strung out. Going left handed. Eurolinka is on the move. Again, that stamina bar. Ballerin de Bost is in front from Signor de Gear. Clear of Frazzled. Agapto Eurolinka back to Wild Clover. Eurolinka moves through the pack. Frazzled is racing midfield and under pressure. This one might stay Save further though, goes so... into the lead. Ballard and Dave Bost is be the reason why it's not filling. Henry might just Holmes find quite a lot. Along in midfield, about seven lengths off the pace. I'm going to have to start Save pushing because they're quickening around me. More. The fever is nowhere out. to go. Going left-handed. Trapped. Ardesh is racing wide of the pack. Ballard and Dave Bost is pushed into the lead again from Sagner de Gear. Inside oh, the final four furlongs. Ballerindu Bost is one length clear of Sagmer de Gear, just clear of Frazzle, clear of Trenny and to hold the gap to rolling. Frazzle like takes up the running from Ballerindu Bost. Inside the final three furlongs. 
Sharp say Moss is pushed along in last. Sharp say Moss is pushed along out the back. Inside the final two furlongs. Henrietta Holmes now just leads. Henrietta Flattening Holmes is a length up on Frazzled. Sharp say Moss is making a move. Inside the final furlong. Henrietta Holmes is pushed two lengths into the lead. Henrietta Holmes looks like winning here. Henrietta Holmes takes it e Well, yeah, that was a bit disappointing. I, I wonder if it just wasn't fit like the other ones. Fitness. Hmm. A bit disappointed with that. I'm sort of hopeful that one would do a bit better. It made its ground really nicely. I'll look at the stats. Uh, again, a half finish application. That really does impact it. Maybe I'd have to get there a little bit later next time. What we got? Now, Group 2 race. Price Beauty. Who, two time Group 1 winner. I think I bought middle of last season. Yeah, 20, June 2030. Just came up at a sale. Um, having placed in Guinea, St. James's Palace, etc. Um, sort of moderate pedigree, half finish application, but very high main bars here. Uh, and we won the Breeders' Cup mile in the stewards' room, and second in the Cranji mile, and bolted up in a very weak Hong Kong mile. Uh, so this one wants to race more prominently, sort of tracking the leaders. This is a fairly strong race. Um, see how we go. They are under starters orders in the group two Almar Tomb Challenge R1. They all just missed the break a little bit. The rock thinking was slow from the gate. Iser Lersh is restrained in the lead by a length. Lesher EO option is racing keenly in fourth. Bit keen, could do with something just giving us a lead. Nice beauty is in front from Kaiser Lersh, a gap back to fast, a lane, a gap to Lesher EO option, a gap to a select committee, a gap back to Milady Lily, a gap to Old Began from Foyne's Carnival and then to Coy Rooney. Kaiser Lersh takes up the running once more from Price Beauty. But we're going quite Shay slowly. Porter is making headway. Shahab Reporter closing on the bridle in 7th position. Less than 5 for longs to go. Kaiser Lersh is the leader from Lisha EO. Auction next is Price Beauty. A gap back to Fast Elaine and then Milady Lily. A gap to a select committee. A gap back to Shahab Reporter. Back to All Began. Well inside the final 4 for longs. You want to be right the there because this is going to be a sprint. All Began is back in the chasing about 6 lengths off the pace. Marifong Archer is out wide. 3 for longs to go. Marifong Archer is pushed along out the back. Price Beauty comes there strongly on the outside. Kaiser Lersh is just ahead of Price Beauty. Well inside the final two furlongs. Hmm. Kaiser Lersh is a length clear of Price Beauty. Worry this horse Kaiser isn't going to find that Kaiser Lersh is in the lead by a length. Marifong Archer is making headway. Well into the final furlong. Price Wearing Beauty the leader, takes it up. But... Lesha Eo Auction is running on. Lesha Eo Auction leads and Lesha Eo Auction wins. Mugged. Yeah, could I have done anything differently there? If I'd got a better trip and had a lead, you know, been able to sit third or something for a bit longer, that might have helped. Hmm. We probably did get beaten by good horses as well. That's a very solid group one horse. Shihab reporter as well. Yeah, there's probably no shame in that. You know, giving six pounds to the winner. Yeah, that's a decent run. Right, and now we have a six furlong maiden where I've put five of my two year olds in. Um, yeah, we'll just see how they go. I won't ride them, I'll just let the AI do everything. I'll probably skip it on as well. Under orders. And they're racing. 
Kirby's kicking is racing at the back a couple of lengths off the pace. Banyan Diego takes a pull in the lead. Banyan Diego is one length in front Speed of the and then rolling from Montegat back to Miller of the D ahead of Kieran Urgun slowly ahead of Crystal Dominatrix from Gentile Moonstone. Mosley Jazz is pulled up. Ritzy Matt goes into the lead. Right, Less than like two furlongs to go. Miller of the D is just ahead of Banyan Diego. Miller of the D has a frack. Kieran Urgun slowly is pulled up. Inside the final furlong. The less deceived is making headway. Banyan Diego has a fractional lead from Chairer Place here. Banyan Diego is pushed in. Banyan oh, Diego is on. the winner. <laughs> so I think we had 4th, 5th, no, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and maybe 6th as well. Jeez, what's this winner then? The thing about it is, okay, fairly well bred. Share <sighs> a plaisir. Less deceived. Local scold. Liquid history. And Miller of the Day all ran well. Can't complain. Alright, that's another day done. And we've got a sale. I don't think we'll be buying any of these though. Let's just have a quick look at the pedigree. Hope Rebellion's not a bad stallion, but it's out of a bad mare. Matter of fact, show nothing. It's quite well bred, but uh, I think per yeah, I actually own Perfect Silence. Old style. I mean, it's showing nothing. Probably leave that. Yeah. So, I'll just play till the 17th, did we say? Yeah. Hopefully, we can get another winner or two. So, we've got five furlong handicap. Thaumaturgist. I often let the AI ride my sprinters as well. I think I'll just look at the result here. We get some comments as well. So, didn't run very well. Mm, not very encouraging. Beaten by better horses. Was that the only one today? Yeah, well, what's this? A winning machine in selling grade. Probably leave it alone. Right, two meetings today. We have Bello Cello. Again, five furlongs. I think I'll just see what happens. Well, I wasn't in the first three. Eight of nine, no good. I'll probably ride Bash to Mera, though. This became a bit disappointing. So I won the Coventry, and then not much after that. I just pick up a little handicap last year at a mile. Fourth in a group three. Yeah, it's just come a bit disappointing. This is a drop in grade though. They're under starter's orders. And they're racing. Bitch Damier starts slowly. Mm. Didn't mean to the Kiss Colour is the leader by a length. Racing left handed. Kiss Colour is keen in first. The field is well strung out. Kiss Colour goes into a two length lead. This colour is two lengths clear of Raaji, clear of Bed and Terrible ahead of Midway. Inside the final mile. 
This colour is two lengths clear of Raaji, clear of bed and terrible from Havenstone ahead of Midway, a gap to Obesh Demir in last position. Right, stamina bar is full. Start to sidle a bit closer. Six for longs to go. Bech Demir is improving from the rear. Chris Culler is the leader by two. Chris Culler is two lengths ahead of Raaji, clear of bed and terrible back to Bech Demir. Well inside the final five furlongs. Going left handed. Havenstone brings up the rear. They have four furlongs to go. Chris Culler is two lengths in front of Raaji ahead of Bech Demir, a gap back to Midway, a gap back to Bed and Terrible, a gap back to Havenstone in last position. Three furlongs to go. Medway is improving from the rear. Kiss colour lead from Bech Demir clear of Medway. Worried about Bech this thing Demir takes a fractional us. advantage. Less than two furlongs to go. Bed and Terrible is making late progress. Bech Demir is one length ahead of Medway. Into the final furlong. Bech Demir leads by two lengths and is now going along. Bech Demir is three lengths clear of Medway. The fa the favourite, Bech Demir, takes it well. Oh, it's pretty comfortable that. Gives a bit of confidence to go back up in grade. It's quite impressive how it made up the ground. Yeah. Beat sort of useful handicappers only. Good it's not completely gone though. Right. Dreadlock holiday. Up to seven furlongs. Nice bars. Got some decent stuff in there too. So is this another one who wants to be held up? Uh... Let's do a bit of both. What's the pedigree? By Satwar Dream. I'm going to assume that it wants to be held up. Maybe if we try and get out. They're under start. Be held and then restrain. We'll, we'll soon know. They're right. off. Pretty sharp. Very sharp. Yeah, Abigail was slowly away. Dreadlock Holiday leads the way by a length. Is it one of the left handed? Alright, Dreadlock Holiday leading, is one so we'll length ahead of my low deer from Battery, Oceanic, a gap back to Bedouin Parchment, and then Deer Abigail just clear of Dory. This so field this is thing well wants strong. To lead as well. Dreadlock Holiday is the leader from Battery, Oceanic, clear of Deer Abigail from my low deer. Inside the final five furlongs. Let's take a lead, try Indian and boost that last. stamina bar. Back trade Oshi Anik is the leader from Dreadlock Holiday a gap back to Deer Abigail a gap Tommy Low Deer a gap to Bedouin Parchment back to Tactfully. Less than four furlongs to go. Tactfully is racing mid division. The favourite needs to find some space. Backing them up a little bit on Well the turn. inside the final three furlongs. My Low Deer is racing midfield and under His pressure a top of the off the pace. Dreadlock Holiday is pushed into the lead. Less than two furlongs to go. Dreadlock Holiday is a length up on Dory. Dory is running on. Dreadlock Holiday is a length up on Dory. Inside the final furlong. Dreadlock control. Holiday leads by two. Dreadlock it's Holiday right out, is two lengths in front of Sweet Peach. Dr Dreadlock Holiday is the easy winner. That was pretty comfortable. That, that was like how Joe Fanning rides. Wolves, isn't it? So we'll get prominent, stack them up on the turn, and then out sprint them. Nice. That could be a useful horse, couldn't it? Winning off 77 there. It's going to go up 10 pounds next time, but I don't know. There's a, uh, what's it called? A three year old race at Lingfield for it, I think. Yeah. 
been some fair pedigrees. Okay, we don't want any of those. What's this? Uh, one of my old horses, ultimate pyjamas I'm tracking. I'll have to switch that off at some point. Ooh, and we've got some horses in foal as well. I'm going to have to do some more breeding soon. Okay, let's do this day. Boil the ocean. I've switched to blinkers, so I think I'll just let the AI read uh, ride this. It's up to six furlongs as well. Let's see if it takes to the headgear. Oh yes, winner. Survive the stewards. Nice, okay. Well, I found the secret to that one. <sighs> Godlike Roy and a mile. This is disappointing. I, I thought this would be one of my best two year olds just looking at the bars. Um, it didn't work out that way. This one wants to be ridden handy. Just got a mile. Let's see if we can sort of make up for a bit of lost time. Under orders. Be roll. I'll get to the lead. She does comfortably from the wide draw. God like Royal Leeds. Amical Writer is pushed into the early lead. Amical Writer is the leader from Godlike Roy two lengths back to Sabra and back to Cathy just clear of Proess more. They are strung out like washing. A lot of these really Amical struggling Rider with the pace. Leads the way by length. Captain Marlin is last. Amical Writer leads from Godlike Roy a gap to Sabra the next is Cathy a few lengths full, to Proess more back to Francis Bruno. Inside the final five furlongs. Pro Esso Moore is improving from the rear. Amical Rider is two lengths ahead of Sabra after the gap back to God like Roy ahead of Cathy clear of Pro Esso Moore and then Francis Bruno ahead of Captain Marlin in last position. Going left handed. Did struggle to lay up. Amical Rider is two lengths in front of Sabra after the gap to a good like Roy a gap back to Cathy clear of Pro Esso Moore and the then bridle. Francis Bruno a gap to Captain Marlin in last position. Less than three fair longs to go. Two furlongs to go. God like Roy comes there strongly on the outside. God like Roy takes a Ooh, fractional advantage. Sabrafa takes a fractional advantage. Look, he didn't and stay. the final furlong. Sabrafa is pushed two lengths into the lead. Croesomla are finishes fast. Croesomla are is a leg. That's really disappointing. I mean, we've gone hard, it's a course record, but the early leader has gone back past. Um, what the issue is there? Strange one. Hmm. Guilty, filthy soul. The one that wants to go handy. Under orders. And they're racing. Doesn't help when you miss the break. Abbey Meadow is restrained in the lead. Guilty filthy soul takes up the running there. from Abbey Meadow. Racing left handed. Still didn't get over. Speaker Rug Humbug is racing midfield about a length off the pace. Abbey Meadow is pushed into the lead again from Guilty Filthy Soul. The field is strung out and he base appears to be good. Trick of Ace is racing midfield and under pressure about four lengths off the pace. Take a lead. Speaker Rug Humbug is back in the chasing pack. Five for lungs to go. Cordeta Valley is pushed along towards the rear. Abbey Meadow is two lengths in front of Guilty Filthy Soul a gap back to Speaker Oog Humbug a gap tossed into this old next is Molesk and Jones from Trick of Ace just clear of Cordero Valley just clear of Mutual on Watches and then a next in last position. Racing left handed. 
mutual or watches us taking the long way around. Less than three furlongs to go. Still got something left. Abbey Meadows, two lengths in front of Molesk and Jones ahead of Guilty Filthy Soul. Two furlongs to go. Stan Thistle is racing midfield and under pressure about seven lengths off the pace. Abbey Meadow is the clear leader. Abbey Meadow leads the way easily. Inside the final furlong. Oh, go on, then. Guilty Filthy Soul runs on late. Abbey Meadow is a length up on Guilty Filthy Soul. Abbey Meadow, oh. the favourite. Abbey Meadow takes it. Just for a minute, I thought we were going to breeze on past. Five furlongs, done with Sergio. Wow, look at those bars. Look at the acceleration and the speed bars. It's missing some finish, so even pace. All right, I'm going to ride this. It's the best horse on ratings, apart from evening. Well, it's still better than that, but that's close. So that's the one to worry about. Under orders. They're off. Tarbillet Weld. Done start. with Sergio is the clear early leader. Great start. Done with Sergio is clear from Infazoid back to Colloquial. Save a little bit. This Gallic roulette ahead of Just Divine. Inside the final four furlongs. Turning left handed. Evening the long way back. Rasher Fez is pushed along run. in midfield about four lengths off the pace. Less than three furlongs to go. Done with Sergio lead from Colloquial Eddie just clear of Just Divine. Next is Gallic Roulette, two lengths bar back to Asher Gersey. Less than two right, far to go. First run. Done with Sergio leads the way easily. Done with Sergio is three lengths in front of Colloquial Eddie. Have I gone too early? And say the final far long. Done with oh, Sergio is three lengths clear of Colloquial Eddie. Elsa oh. Fear back. Sharading Diddley takes it. New course record. Must have gone too hard. Ah, that's a shit ride. That oh, is quite well bred. <clears throat> Damn it. Probably comes out the best on ratings as well. Yeah, you know, given the weight concession. Hmm. Right, fallen leaves. All right, this is a stayer. Three-year-old against older horses. Oh, ultimate pajamas. The reunion. So a good, honest horse. Won me a couple of group threes. They're under starter's orders. They're off. That red flash was me missing the break, but it's a hold up for us anyway. Well, so. Rose is pushed along to an early lead by a length. Going much. left handed. I feel like they're going very hard. Fallen leaves his last. Willow Rose is two lengths ahead of Raymond Francesca, just clear of Jarrow Reserve, and then Ultimate right, Pajama. I want to get Kelsey close to this. Like <coughs> like Willow Rose fast. opens up in front by three lengths. Lehu Island moves through the pack from over five lengths off the lead. Couple in the same colours there. Willow Maybe Rose it's the real Kenny Alexander. Raymond Francesca just clear of Lehu Island ahead of Jarrow Reserve. A gap back to Fallen Leaves. A gap to Ultimate Pajamas. And then Kelsey Rose in last position. Again, I'm worried about my stamina <coughs> bar. Left-handed. Willow Rose is four lengths ahead of Raymond Francesca just clear of Lehu Island. A gap to Jarrow Reserve. Passing horses on the bridle, though. Six I'm not doing anything, just drifting past them. 
willow rose is clear from Lahu Island, just clear of Raymond Francesca Gaptoffel and leaves. Willow rose goes nicely. Five furlongs to go. Willow Rose travels well. Jaro Reserve looks badly off the Willow Rose leads from Lahu Island ahead of Raymond Francesca. Two lengths clear of Fallen Leaves, just clear of Jaro Reserve. Passing just clear the money of more. Rose Agap to Ultimate Pajamas in last position. Racing left handed. Ultimate Pajamas is pushed along in last. That's making up quite stealthy ground now. They have three fair longs to go. I didn't want to go wide round the turn, but I couldn't find a way through either. And they've actually quickened again in front. Jaro Reserve is making headway Jaro. from the rear. Inside the final two furlongs. Willow Rose has a clear lead from Lehu Island. Next is Raymond Francesca. A gap back to Fallen Leaves. Back to Jaro Reserve. A gap back to Kill Zero's clear of Ultimate Pajamas in last position. Inside the final furlong. Didn't find Lehu anything. Island finish is fast. Gonna beat Ultimate Pajamas though. Lehu Island takes it. What happened there? That was disappointing. They did. Maybe they didn't stay. It's not bred to get that far. Back to mile two next time, maybe. Okay, and this will be the last day we play, I think, on this recording. Oh, my cat's here. Right, listed race, six furlongs. We've got the highest rated, but we're up against South Africans, who are quite hard to beat at home. That's probably quite a good horse. We've got Mrs. Gibson's Jam. Plenty of racing, it's fairly exposed. Might be good enough, might have improved. All in for the Swallow listed stakes. And they're racing. So another hold up horse. Can she lay up with them? Golden Dream leads up early. Mrs. Gibson's jam is racing out the back about four lengths off the pace. Going left handed. The field is well strung out. Guy is on good move. Though. Golden Dream is two lengths in front of Lehana Gap to Puka's daughter ahead of Guy Bulga. Well inside the final four furlongs. Puka's daughter is pushed along in midfield. Guy Bulga is racing midfield and under pressure about four lengths off the pace. Well inside the final three furlongs. Oh, some sort of chance. Stamina bar is full. Golden Dream leads from Lahana a few lengths to Puka's daughter a gap to Guy Bulga and then Demolition Joe. Golden Dream has a fractional lead from Lahana. Inside the final two furlongs. Golden Dream is one length ahead of Lahana. We might get second Mrs. at least. Mrs. Gibson's jam is making headway. Golden Dream has three in hand of Lahaina. Into the final furlong. Mrs. Gibson's jam is running on. Golden Dream is one length ahead of Mrs. Gibson's oh, jam. Brilliant. Mrs. Gibson's jam takes it. Hands up if you thought I wasn't going to get there. <laughs> that was quite impressive, actually. I like how the stamina bar just stayed full, even when I was just riding it for what it was worth. Yeah, that might be a decent horse. Listed winner now. As well. Nice. Right. So we got old tennis shoes. Now this doesn't do anything that quickly but does finish off quite well. Um, and hot sugar doesn't really stay a mile four, so we need to be positive. And what's the other one who's sort of in the same ballpark? Annual Duron Anubis. Okay, so that's won a decent race over the trip. Right, how does mine like to be ridden? Held up. Okay, so we just need to make sure we're attacking quite early here. Under orders for the Champions Day, the 6th of May. I like how. And they're racing. And my stables are playing the shoes. We go to South Africa. We, we go all over the world. 
Odin flips his push to Longsley in early lead. Africa. Frank Hinogog in races a little freely in second. Kribilla is keen towards the back. In real life, I mean, that, that's is making uh, headway. Odin flips the two ranks in front of Frank Hinogog again from strings a gap to Fabrofen and then Pantita. Racing left handed. The favourite is losing ground and is nine lengths off the lead. Buxted Walker races widest of all. Old Tennis Shoes is anchored in the rear. Odin flips his two lengths clear of strings a gap back to Pantito and then frankly no go again back to Fudbrofen and then Blue Lightning a gap toss Bates Town missed a gap back to South Wales and Gizmo a gap back to Mustache Pimpernel. Inside the final mile. I like the name Old Tennis Shoes, Odin it's from uh, the leader Canary from Road, name back of some like from Blue whiskey Lightning from the, the, no go again. that the, uh, you can buy in that sort of corner shop. Odin flips his two lengths in front of strings just clear of Pantito. I think Pantito there was a rougher one as well. No go again from Blue Lightning and then Spates Town is just clear of Fabrofen, just clear of South Wales and Gizmo, just clear of Hot Sugar. Inside right, the we were going to attack early, weren't we? So let's try and get up Old there. Old Tennis Shoes is making ground from the rear. Odin flips travels well. Cribilla is anchored in the rear about five lengths off the pace. Well inside the final five furlongs. Turning left handed. Hot sugar the one we want to stay. Buxted Walker struggles in the rear and is about yeah, seven lengths off the pace. Half Old mile Tennis out. Shoes is pushed into the lead. Old Tennis Shoes quickens into a two length lead. Hot sugar, hot sugar is now second. Leads from hot sugar to get back to Crivella. Inside the final wide three right for the turn. move. Buxted Walker is pulled up out the back. Hot sugar is making ground. Daniel Deer on Annual. Odin Flipsy is pulled up. They have hot two sugar. furlongs to go. Old Tennis shoes is two lengths clear of hot sugar. And at Alder and Anu Bessie's running on. Inside the final furlong. Old Tennis Shoes is pushed along in the lead by two lengths. And at Alder and Anu Bessie's running on but has two. The favourite Old Tennis Shoes takes it well. Quite impressive, really. Uh, look at the distances in, they, in this behind us. Oh, it's another valuable race one in South Africa though. Right, group three, we've got work to do on the ratings, but getting weight from these two group three winners with Deutsches Requiem, who won the Futurity and the Superlative Stakes last year. Hold up horse. And Lay, Lady Lay on the May Hill. Hmm. Which one to ride? I think I like Deutsche's Requiem a bit more. Let's go with that. They are under starters orders in the Group 3 London News Grade 3 Stakes. And they are racing. Gordonsville Glanton was slowly away. <coughs> How are you doing not so bad leads under restraint by a length? Deutsche's Requiem is racing at the back about three lengths off the pace. They have less than a mile to go. Going left handed. Western Dodge moves through the pack. How are you doing? Not so bad leads by a length. Gordon's Phil Glanton is making smooth headway on the outside in fourth position. How are you doing? Not so bad is one length in front of Signatory Visa ahead of Gordon's Phil Glanton. The gap to Shahade from Lay Lady Lay and then Significant Dolder. Less than six furlongs to go. Gordon's Phil Glanton is making headway. Need to get through. How are you doing? Not so bad is the leader from Gordon's Phil Glanton. The gap back to Signatory Visa Gap to Lay Lady Lay next to Significant Alder and then Western Dodge from Secret Acclamation ahead of Isha Ada. Gap back to Deutsche's Requiem in last position. Turning left handed. Gordon's Phil Glanton is pushed into the lead again from How are you doing? Not so bad. 
well inside the final four furlongs. How are you doing not so bad is pushed into the lead again from Gordonsville Glanton. Inside the final three furlongs. Deutsch's Requiem makes progress from over a length right. of the pace. Deutsch's Requiem is pushed into the lead from How You're Doing Not So Bad. Well inside the final two furlongs. How Are You Doing Not So Bad is pushed into the lead again oh, from away. Deutsch's Requiem. Deutsch's Requiem is driven to lead again. Into the final furlong. Deutsch's Requiem is a length clear of How Are You Doing Not So Bad. Deutsch's Requiem is two lengths clear of Sigmund. Look at that, first and third as well, maybe. Picked up really well, didn't it? How it sort of whizzed from like near last to, to challenge for the lead and then we sort of knuckled down. Oh, uh, we didn't get a third, but we beat the marker horse, Signatory Visa, who supposedly is a 1 2 5 horse. Yeah, but Group 1 4, maybe this is a good one. I mean, it did win a couple of Group 2s last year, so it should be good. Yeah, impressive. Should get another furlong as well. Hmm. Lady Lay wants a bit further, says the jockey. Nothing there. Right. That was a good day. Um, mopped up in South Africa. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it here. Um, I'll set up some more breeding pairs because, yeah, see, all these are in foal now, so I can set up some new matings. Um, and then we'll play another week on the uh, on the next video, I think, which will include the Al Fahidi Fort and uh, a couple of sails. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you again soon.